Microplastics are raining down from the sky and accumulating in every corner of the earth. Despite the environmental threat of microplastics in general, there's a surprisingly low amount of research that has been done. Slime molds are one of the many natural decomposers of organic matter and can be found all over the world. Using the slime mold species Physarum polycephalum, we hereby want to test the environmental influences of microplastics on its growth and oscillating properties. The life cycle of P. polycephalum includes several stages. The main stages that we use are the active growing plasmodium and its permanent state called sclerotium. What do we need to cultivate P. polycephalum? Agar agar as media, stira as scalpels, sclerotia of P. polycephalum, and petri dishes. To cultivate the slime mold, a piece of filter paper is placed on a 2% agar with the sclerotium upside down. For reactivation, some drops of sterile water are given onto the sclerotium. Afterwards, some sterile oat flakes are placed directly next to it. The oat flakes are used as nutrient source because they are cheap, easy to handle and simple to sterilize. By looking at microscopic images and the petri dish itself, mold contamination was observed after cultivation. Mold is one of the major villains of P. polycephalum and hence restricts its growth and development. That's why it needs to be eliminated in further studies. A new batch of fully grown plasmodia from the University of Bremen has arrived. Subsequently, all steps were conducted under sterile conditions to avoid mold contamination. After the development of a big plasmodium, it has to be transferred onto a new agar plate. Therefore, a piece of agar is cut out and placed upside down into a new petri dish. After adding water drops and oat flakes, the petri dish is sealed with parafilm, which has small cuts to ensure air exchange. Cultures are kept in a dark incubator at 25 degrees. As a microplastic representative, we use PLGA particles, which were synthesized through a water-oil water emulsion. As a fluorescent dye, we use near red. After injecting the fluorescent microbeads, we observe the oscillation behavior of the slime mold. The microbeads were floating through the slime mold vessels and seemed to adhere to their walls after a certain time.
To ensure a stock of long-term stadiums of P. polycephalum, we produced some sclerotia. Therefore, a piece of overgrown agar or oat flake was placed onto a sterile filter paper in a petri dish. To ensure initial growth of a plasmodium, the filter paper is moistened and oats were added. After two days in the incubator, all nutrient sources were removed. Then it was stored until the filter paper was completely dry. For reactivation of the sclerotium, only some drops of water need to be dropped onto it. In summary, our work included the following aspects. The cultivation conditions were optimized and the occurring initial contamination of the slime mold was eliminated by changing the supplier. The fastest and most reliable growth was achieved at a temperature of 25 degrees and a humidity over 80%. P. polycephalum shows temperature-dependent oscillation. Fluorescent PLDA particles, as representatives for microplastic pollution, were synthesized. After injection into the plasmodium, the particles seem to adhere to the vessels. For future experiments, a permanent state of P. polycephalum was cultivated and stored.